welcome readers. Today, we're going to be working with prefixes. Do you remember what a prefix is? We've learned that a prefix is a word part added to the beginning of a word to change that word and its meaning. Our goal today is to read and understand words with the under and after prefixes. Write these prefixes with me. Under, after. Now, the under prefix means below or less, and the after prefix means later or after. We're going to use our loop and swoop strategy to read these words, and then we'll talk about what they mean. Read with me. Un, der, ground. Underground. This word is underground. We can understand this word by thinking about the prefix, under. Under means below or less. So underground means below the ground. While you might see some snakes burrowing underground, the northern water snake is more likely to be found swimming or warming itself on a rock. Let's put him right there. Now, let's try another word. Read this word with me. After effect. After effect. This word is after effect. By looking at the prefix after, we can understand this word. After means later or after. An effect is a result or consequence of an action. So an after effect is an effect or a result that happens at a later time. Some people think the northern water snake is venomous and should be killed. It's not. One after effect of killing snakes is that larger animals that hunt them for food might go hungry. Let's try another word. Read with me. Un, der, eat. Under eat. This word is under eat. Let's think about what it means using the prefix. Under can mean below or less. So under eat means to eat less than you should. Northern water snakes do not under eat. They will eat insects and birds and mice and fish and frogs and leeches and turtles and even other snakes and more. They do not under eat. Let's read our last word together. Read with me. After thought. Afterthought. This word is afterthought. What does afterthought mean? Well, the after prefix means later or after. And thoughts are the things that we think. So an afterthought is something you think at a later time. Maybe after something has already happened. As an afterthought, I should tell you that even though northern water snakes are not venomous, they do try to bite sometimes if you get too close. So it's good to give them space. Great work reading words with the prefixes under and after. Now let's see if we can read words with these prefixes in a text. Now that we've practiced reading and understanding words with the prefixes under and after, let's see if we can read some of these words in this text. Read with me. Twice each year, the amazing red knot bird migrates over 9,000 miles. For these traveling birds, food is an afterthought. They fly long distances before stopping. When red knots finally stop and eat, they are thin and underweight. While resting, they don't under eat. They stuff themselves with horseshoe crab eggs. Did you notice any words with the prefixes under or after? I noticed a few. Let's look at two of these words together. The first word that I noticed was this one here, 
afterthought. Afterthought has two parts, the prefix after and the base word thought. Let's practice looping and swooping this word. After thought. Afterthought. Remember, the loop and swoop strategy can help you when you're reading and you come to challenging words. After means later or after. And thought are the things that you think. So an afterthought is a thought that you have at a later time. What other word did you notice when one of the prefixes we've been learning about? I noticed this word here, underweight. When we look at this word, let's practice looping and swooping it to read it together. Underweight. Underweight. Now, the, the prefix under means below or less. And the base word weight is about how much something weighs. So if something is underweight, that means that it weighs less than it should. So these birds do not weigh enough when they stop because they've flown for so long without eating. Great work reading words with the prefixes under and after. Now let's see if we can spell some of these words together. Now that we've practiced reading words with the under and after prefixes, it's time to practice spelling some of these words. You're going to need whatever it is that you have to write on and something to write with. When we spell words, it helps us to visualize or make a picture in our minds of how many word parts that word has. When we can see those word parts in our mind, we can listen for the sounds in each part and then put the parts back together to make the entire word. Today, we'll be listening for syllables in words so that we're able to spell them more accurately. Are you ready to try it? Our first word is underwater. Say that with me. Underwater. When I say that word, I hear four syllables. Under. Water. Let's start by drawing lines for each of the syllables we heard. Underwater. Now that we have these parts ready, we can start by matching the sounds that we hear with letters that we know. The first part is un. I hear two sounds in un. A uh, n. Mm. Let's write the letters that match those sounds. Un. We spell un, U-N. Now it's time to move on to the next part. Dur, un, dur. I hear three sounds in dur. D, uh, er. Those second two sounds slide together. They're hard to separate, but there are three sounds in that word part. Let's write the letters that match those sounds. D -r. Does your spelling match mine so far? We have un -der, the prefix under. Now, all we have left is the base word water. The first part we hear in water is wa. I hear two sounds in wa, w, a. Uh. Write the sounds that you hear in that part. Uh. Does your spelling match mine? Good work. Now all we have left is one word part to finish our word. Under water. Are you ready? I hear three sounds in that part. Let's match the sounds that we hear with letters that we know. Does your spelling match mine? Good work. We have that er spelling again, and it sounds the same as it did in der. You might have been tricked by the letter T in the word water. 
Some people pronounce T's in the middle of a word more like a D sound. It's not usually as strong as the D that we hear, D, but it doesn't sound exactly like a T that we might pronounce at the beginning of a word, for example. So we need to be careful and listen for those small differences while we're spelling. Now that we have these four parts, we can put these parts together to make our word. Un, der, wa, der. Underwater. Underwater means below the water. There are many animals that live underwater. Now let's move on to our next word. Our next word is undertow. Say that word with me, undertow. I hear three parts, three syllables in the word undertow. Un-der-toe. Let's try lines for each of those syllables. Un-der-toe. Now, when we write this, we might be able to look at the word we've written before because it also started with the prefix under. When we hear that first part in under, I hear un and I hear two sounds. Uh, n. Let's write the letters that match those sounds. Un. Now we have the part der, which we know has three sounds. D, uh, r, der. And we have our base word, toe. I hear two sounds in toe. Oh, remember, just because there are only two sounds doesn't mean that there has to be two letters. Write the letters that match the sounds you hear in toe. T oh. Toe. In this word, the O W make the long O sound. O. T o. There are two sounds in that part, but it is written with three letters. Now, let's put these parts back together to make our word. Un, der, toe. The undertow is the current of water below the surface of the water. So when the waves crash above onto the shore, the undertow pulls the water back out below the surface of the water. You might see rocks and shells being pulled back out with the undertow when you're at the beach. Let's write our final word together. Our last word is afterglow. Say that with me. Afterglow. When I say the word afterglow, I hear three syllables. Af, ter, glow. Let's write lines for each of those syllables. Af, ter, glow. Now, let's start with that first part, af. I hear two sounds. Write down the letters that you hear that match those sounds. Af. Does your spelling match mine? Good work. Now we have the part ter. How many sounds do you hear in that part? There are three sounds. Those second two sounds slide together to make the er sound, but we know that there are actually three sounds there. Let's spell that part. T -er. After. Now we have the parts af, ter, after. All that's left is the base word glow. I hear three sounds in glow. G, l, o. Remember again, just because there are three sounds doesn't mean there will be three letters. Let's write the word glow using letters that match the sounds we hear. G -o. Once again, we have the O-W at the end of the word making the long O sound. G -o. Good work. Let's put these parts together to make our word. After. Glow. We know that after means later or after, and glow is about light and shining. So the afterglow is the light and shine that we see 
after the sun has set. It's the glow that's left later than the sunset. If you're staying at the beach to watch the sunset, you should make sure you stick around for a bit to watch the afterglow. Great work writing words with the prefixes under and after. This program is made possible in part by the Michigan Department of Education, the State of Michigan, and the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. Additional support by and by viewers like you. Thank you.